Have you ever been in the middle of the perfect take only to have your camera lose focus? Well, today we're gonna be solving that problem and a few others. Also, without even breaking the bank. So stick around and you'll see how we made this 15 key external USB-C Arduino powered RGB smart keyboard for basically stuff all, I think less than 40 or 50 bucks. Check this out. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you might have noticed that over the last few months, I've been out at this workshop a bit. Before that, I was over at my house. Before that, I can't even remember where I was, but one thing's consistent. My recordings are shite. Pardon my language, but I've had a hard time with controlling OBS, and there's a whole number of external factors there. I've had a dodgy computer that kept crashing. I've had issues uh, with the webcam and the USB port. I've um, configured automatic scene changes that haven't worked properly. I've forgotten to configure automatic scene changes. It's, it's just difficult. And that's compounded by over there, I might put a picture up. The Logitech Brio webcam really likes focusing on what's below me, not what I want. So I've had to manually turn autofocus on and off and uh, change the focus points, which then sometimes ends up in the video, sometimes doesn't. And it's not the smooth, nice transitions that I want, like this video will hopefully have. So. I was umming and ahhing, and there are obviously a lot of solutions out there, like the Elgato Stream Deck, things like that, but you know what? I've got a workshop. I've got a 3D printer over there. I've got all of this shit. I thought I could make one myself, and so I thought I'd start this journey and see what I came up with. It's taken me about four straight days. This is the fourth day where I'm actually recording it now. Uh, the first day was all research. The Second day was all 3D printing. The third day was all assembly. Fourth day is presentation. But I'm really happy that with the result. This is what, hang on. This is what we have made. It is an RGB 3D printed 15 key external keyboard. And this is controlled by an Arduino Pro Micro internally. These keycaps I 3D printed myself using my SLA printer so I could get that transparency. I uh, used some knockoff WS2812Bs inside it, uh, some custom code that I just used an LLM to write for me because honestly it took like 30 seconds and I'll show you a bit later. I FDM printed this external enclosure and that's in PLA which I then just sanded and polished to a really nice finish. So the finished product essentially uh, has its little USB port on the back and you plug it in very carefully because that control is just uh, hot glued in there at the moment. And you've got a few fundamental controls I've set up. It starts in snaky mode. Everybody loves snaky mode. Then as soon as you touch a key, it's ready for action. So these first few keys is gonna be your record, stop recording. If you're recording, you've then got pause or unpause. These keys I haven't defined yet, so nothing in the code happens. This is then autofocus. Hence, you've got the little RGB thing going. So in autofocus, it's gonna be what you expect, like this, where it focuses where it needs to. However, sometimes I wanna fix focus. So I've got 10, 15, and 25. And of course, they're mutually exclusive or back to autofocus. Lastly, we're gonna have our four different inputs. So I've got the Brio webcam. I've got the desktop. I've got, oh, sorry, no, that's the capture card. No, that's desktop. So Brio webcam, desktop, capture card with desktop pre, uh, with web camera, capture card without web camera, or something like that. I've got to play around with them to figure it out. But as you can see, it's it's all that we need. We've even got two buttons spare. I don't know what I'll do with those. Maybe I'll make them insert some little noise. I'm having a hard time with the backwardsness of this. But this honestly like 12 bucks for the Cherry MX silvers that are in there, um, a dollar of material to print the keycaps, maybe two bucks of material to print that. $18 for the controller, $3 for the USB cable, a day of your time. Whole thing, depending on how you value your time, really didn't take long. I'd encourage you to do it. Even if you don't have a 3D printer, uh, you can use PCBWay services. This is sponsored by PCB, and I'll show you how you can use their services to make one of these if you don't have a 3D printer. You probably also have a mate that has one, but either way, plenty of options out there. And if you're a streamer or, you know, basically if you need 15 more keys or 12 more keys on your computer, this is gonna do the trick. 
having a hunt online, there were quite a few different options. People have DIY'd this a million times over and the Pro Micro is a really common controller for it because it's easy to program with the Arduino. It's compatible with the Leonardo as well, just in a smaller form factor. They're cheap as chips and they can work in keyboard or mouse mode. So it can actually pretend to be a keyboard. The trick there is that uh, as far as keyboard inputs go, you actually have F13 through F24, but uh, for most cases, they're not actually mapped to anything. Sometimes that's what the function keys will use to mute and unmute or turn off trackpad and stuff like that, but they're kind of free for you to use as you try. So getting an Arduino Pro Mini and configuring it to act as a keyboard based on these GPIOs is really not hard. And uh, quite a few people have done it over the years. The first one was a little 8x8. I found that on GitHub maybe, and then found this Thingiverse. Then I found someone had copied that on Thingiverse and made this model or close to it. So this is, uh, sorry, I meant a two by four, an eight button. This is a 12 button, which is three by four. And it's a slightly different form factor. And he does also have uh, room on the bottom for a non-slip pad. However, I'm just gonna put rubber feet on it and I've left holes there so I can actually pull the reset pins through if need be. Uh, the things that I've changed this, he didn't have RGB and I wanted some sort of visual feedback. I also didn't use his code because of course, some of these need to be radio buttons, some of them need to be toggle. Uh, so there was some really different use case there. So I used Claude to write the code. I used my sheer determination to put it together. I used two different 3D printers to print it. Um, Realistically, eight keys wasn't enough, 12 slightly too many, so leaving two spares perfectly fine. And I thought there's enough of a starting point that this isn't gonna be a hard project to do. I also haven't made a video like this before, which is a story about something I'm making. Now, disclaimer, I do have the shop. I'll probably put a card up there for it, but I won't be selling these because they're too much of a pain in the ass to make. I mean, realistically, if there's a dem enough demand, but they'll be like 100 bucks each or 150 bucks each. And I don't think realistically you wanna pay it. I spent four hours polishing this to this finish so it didn't look like a FDM print. Um, not everyone will be able to do that, but maybe, maybe I could sell kits to DIY them. The kit would maybe be 50 bucks. And as long as you've got a 3D printer or use PCBWay's 3D printing services, you can DIY one yourself. Now, the parts that I chose were the MX Cherry Silvers. In fact, I can pop a key cap off here and you can see them in there. I chose those, A, because they're not really clicky. They're fairly silent. I don't want you to hear the click when I'm changing the video, but also because they're transparent. Uh, they do have a little three mil hole in the back where you can stick an LED through, but because I use w, uh, WS2812s or the equivalent, I just hot glued these to it. And as you can see, it, it is offset. I really should have used two per, but the wiring was hard enough. Um, but it looks really good. It's very easy to tell exactly what key is in use. So I'm quite happy with that result. Uh, there probably are other key switches out there that are silent, that support RGB. But honestly, I didn't spend too long looking. Mouse, I have them. Link to it below. Cheap as chips, like a dollar each or something. Pro Micro, I already explained why. You can use WS2812s. They are a little bit expensive. They excel for animation, stuff like that. Whereas we don't really need animation. We're barely animating the rainbow. So I ended up going for these uh, knockoff brands, uh, this knockoff brand, which I've got a couple of hundred of, linked to those below as well, because they work just as well. And they consume no current, like 12 milliamps each. So this draws nothing, which is great. I then chose PETG for the outside case. I could have SLA printed it, but SLA prints like these keycaps are quite brittle. So uh, there's a chance that this would get chipped and also you can't really sand it the same. I wanted that nice sanded polished finish on this, which works for me. And then I used the SLA or MSLA printer, which was my Elegoo Satin uh, 4K, I think it is, for the keycaps because I had some transparent resin Realistically, I could have done these with FDM as well if I bought some new uh, material, like a clear PL uh, PETG. Sorry, if I said PLA, I meant PETG. This isn't PLA, PETG, because uh, I've got heaps of it as well. I've got like 10 kilos. Um, yeah, I could have 3D printed these with FDM, but they wouldn't have looked as good and they might have been a little bit harder. So I put the supports for these on uh, the faces and I had to sand them back anyway. And then... Realistically, that, that was pretty much everything. Everyone's got spare USB cables lying around and it just took some Arduino code to stitch the rest together. 
So the build process all up was pretty straightforward. I dumped the key cap keys into Lychee Slicer and just used the automated process to prep those. I dumped the, uh, the body of this and that filler bit straight into Ultimaker Cura and sliced that for the FDM printer. And then I started them printing. Whilst they were printing, I had to uh, assemble the chain of LEDs and the chain of buttons. Both those took a fair bit of time and I would probably do it differently if I had to do it again. The reason was that using these SMD LEDs, the solder points are really, really fine. And so I was quite concerned that assembling it, like weaving this, this caterpillar through the buttons, something would break. To minimize that, I decided to cover them all in hot glue since I was gonna be hot gluing them down anyway. That adds a bit of rigidity to the uh, wires coming off them and protects them from, uh, I guess, the sharp bends that I'm gonna be putting it through. And so after putting all the keycaps in place and wiring those together with a common ground and then going to pins two through nine, uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, I think it is, that was all good. And then I just had to weave these in between, hold them in place and glue them down. Now, I used a common ground for all of the keys. So I tapped onto that ground for all of the LEDs. I had to have the common data in and data out between them. And then I just amalgamated the power lines, which honestly, as I said, up to 36 milliamp if you're going full white. Uh, I just amalgamated those into a couple of wires and touched them off on the raw pin. Raw is the raw input from this. So uh, nothing to interfere with it. These things support something like three volts up to seven and a half volts, so plenty of wiggle room, and it minimized the complexity. The data in for the first one in this chain, I then attached to pin A0, which again on the Pro Micro, being a uh, at mega 32U4 base, you've got heaps of flexibility there. You can use pretty much any pin for anything. Fast enough digital output on that pin that it does the 800 or so K that we need for the fast LED library that we used. We then also use the bounce library uh, just to debounce these buttons a bit because that can definitely help with any flickering. Um, debouncing is pretty easy, but the bounce two library works really well. And Honestly, I've started using Claude now. I've got the pay subscription. I've been using that for two months, having switched from ChatGPT because its code is excellent. Last week, it output a 300-line PowerShell script to deal with Veeam backup for Office 365 that works straight away. It output a 200-line bash script to do something for me that works straight away. And the code from this actually works straight away. The only things it didn't do is things that I didn't ask it to do. So there ended up being 16 variations, including the initial test variations, They'll be on GitHub below for you to have. They're fairly well documented. I did give them a little polishing touch here and there, but they work a treat and that's what I'm now using. So, pretty much it's made, it's working. I just need to start using it. I welcome any feedback and I, as I said, I might make a kit for it, but you're welcome to the code. You're welcome to the 3D print materials which weren't made by me or to the designs. And, um, you know, I, I think this could be a good alternative. I don't know. I haven't even used it yet. This is just plugged into power. Pardon my hiccups. Hang on. It's not even plugged into the computer yet. So let's go have a look at that. All right, I'm not sure if you caught that at the start there, but I just hit that button to start this recording and now I can pause it, so... Hopefully that gave you an idea of it pausing. We can also then switch our inputs. So the way we actually did that in OBS is in this hotkey section. So start recording, pause recording, and you can switch your inputs down here. Uh, what I still haven't got right though, is my busted Ubuntu install isn't executing the commands that I want to change the autofocus. It should be really easy, but the problem is that Ubuntu tries to handle a lot of these commands itself. That is though, working exactly like I want. I haven't figured out what to do with these two yet. They might be panic buttons, I've got no idea. But this is gonna be so much easier and is making my life so, so simple for recording content for you guys. Now, to quickly show you what we can do is, uh, I can go to PCB way. I can use this button to, uh, oh, no, sorry, that button. Gonna to have to get used to it. No, it's that button, yeah. To change to the desktop. And we can have a look at PCB way. So they are sponsoring this one. And as I said, they do 3D printing and they do it really effectively. So if we have a quick look, what it would cost for you to get it 3D printed 
we can go to our 3D folder, Stream Deck, Files, Main Body, chuck that in there. PETG so you can sand it. We're only going to want one of them. And honestly, 14 bucks plus shipping. And shipping's like 10 bucks to most places. This is US dollars. So we could say that we want black PETG, 20% infill's fine. They don't do a surface finish on this. But I mean, realistically, you could also change the material or use a different sort of um, engineering. You could CNC mill it if you really wanted to throw some money away. And that would look awesome. But as I said, 14 bucks to have it 3D printed is really, really cool. Uh, if you have it out of a different material, you can of course have different finishes. You could have it painted and everything like that. So if we go, there you go, nylon painted blue, that's 40 bucks. But honestly, PTG, pick your color, we'll go blue, sand it yourself, looks the treat. So I think this is the way to go for this. Ah, we have to change that. All right, so when it's not in focus, it doesn't work. That should be easy to change as well. I have to have a twiddle. Um, this should be really easy for you to make one. If you want me to sell it as a kit, definitely let me know in the comments because it wouldn't be hard to put a few bits together like the LEDs, USB cable, uh, the Pro Micro, and uh, the keys as a kit. If you're cheap as chips, really fun, possibly a good Christmas present for everyone. So now to wrap up, all of the settings that I used for the 3D prints, links to the 3D prints file, files, all the code, pictures of the assembly, and everything will be in the GitHub link below for you to use to your heart's content. Do what you want with it, just attribute me for any of the bits that I made, attribute Claude, the LLM, for any of the bits it made, of course. Uh, all of the pin mappings, everything like that will be there. Now, if I was to do this again, pardon me, would I do it differently? I think I probably would. Now, it's worth noting that the Pro Micros I've got don't quite fit in this case. They're a little bit big, so I had to snip some of the insides. Um, I would probably modify it before I printed it. I would possibly print the keycaps differently and where the keycaps sit in here, I'd add another border around them. I'd probably recess it a bit further and add borders between them so they're sliding in a socket because they can just get slightly caught up sometimes. Last night, I honestly just sat there doing this for like an hour whilst I was watching other YouTube videos just to kind of break them in and wear proof it. And it didn't fault, which I'm really happy with. Uh, so yeah, I might do the keycaps and the keycap uh, body a little bit differently. Um, I wouldn't sand it because that was literally somewhere between four and six hours and not necessary. I did learn a lot from that experience though. Other than that, no, there isn't actually too much I'd change because I'm very, very happy with this. Would I just buy one? No, they're bloody expensive. This cost me less even in my time than what the real ones cost. They, of course, do have their place. They're a lot easier to use. They come pre-assembled and they integrate better. I do still have some little bugs to work out with like the OBS integration and using it on Linux, but for the most part, it does work pretty fine. Um, and as I said, I'd probably put RGB in both sides or find one that actually slots into the little three mil hole. So I hope you learned something from this. I hope you find it interesting and wanna make one for yourself or contribute. I would love you to like and subscribe and thumbs up and all of those wonderful things. Plus click the link to PCBWay below. If you do want to 3D print one and you haven't signed up before, the link will give you $5 off your first order, which means you can actually print this case. Uh, not in, uh, that wasn't including that little um, body bit there uh, for $14. So it'll end up costing you $9 plus shipping, which is really, really good. Again, any feedback, any input, you're welcome to send it through. If you have any suggestions, you can always issue a pull request on GitHub. So take care with your start of winter, start of summer, wherever you are. Um, keep on tinkering and learning, discovering new things, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. Oh, and I nearly forgot one really important thing is some big old grippy feet on this bad boy so it doesn't slide around when I'm hitting it. And that's why I didn't need to print that other base plate. I don't even know where I found these. They came with something that I'm probably meant to put it on, and the missus is going to have a whinge that shit's sliding everywhere. But that's what I want.